morning to everybody. Uh, welcome in uh, Greece. I am uh, Dr. Anastasiadis from Greece and we will start directly with the first session of live uh, surgeries with oncology and robotics. Uh, as, mo as moderators, we have uh, John Varkarakis from Athens, Tarik Esen from Turkey and Rafael Coelho with us from uh, Brazil. And uh, we will start directly with the first case. Our first case is a 65-year-old male with progressive lower urinary tract symptoms. He has no significant medical or surgical antecedents. He uses 100 mg aspirin daily for primary prevention. Digital rectal examination shows a slightly enlarged prostate gland with a palpable right nodule in the right lobe. PSA is 4.6 nanograms per milliliter. Multiparametric MRI shows a pyrus tree lesion at left prosthetic apex, measuring 9 per 7 millimeters. His aspirin treatment suspended four days ago and antibiotic prophylaxis maintained according to our protocol. Now Dr. Dr. Boris Bakker will perform a biopsy fusion. Okay. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, Istanbul. First, I would like to thank to, uh, the organization committee. It's really a great pleasure to be here. Uh, you have already heard about our patient and the urologist last decision is biopsy. So we will go on uh, biopsy, we will perform MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy. First, let me introduce the setup. Uh, this is the fusion biopsy system. Uh, and this is a regular ultrasound system uh, and we have a regular table for prostate biopsies and uh, this is a magnetic field generator uh, which can track the probe. There is a sensor on probe and thanks to that sensor this device can uh, track the probe in space. And uh, let's go on the biopsy procedure. This is our pre-biopsy screen. Uh, first, you see uh, we have to check uh, the MRI images on the screen. In fact, this uh, system has a, a radiological platform which can uh, review the images. Uh, so, uh, I can briefly summarize and the MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy steps as four steps. The first step is to review the images and uh, prostate segmentation on MRI. The second stage is or step is prostate segmentation on ultrasound images. The th third step is to fuse uh, these two 3D volume data set. And the fourth step is uh, to take the samples. So we will uh, start with the first step. Uh, as I told you, this uh, system has a radiological platform and the radiologist can review the images on that uh, software. And also uh, this system has a software uh, which can perform prostate segmentation automatically. And that's what we see. And the prostate volume uh, on MRI images. And also the radiologist, and that's me <laughs> yesterday night, uh, we reviewed the case and uh, I saw, we saw there's a, a lesion in the, on the left apex uh, peripheral uh, zone uh, and it's a little bit posterior medial and posterior lateral location. So uh, let's go on the next step. The next step is to control, to check uh, the connection between ultrasound, ultrasound uh, and fusion system and it seems okay. And we are going on to the patient. Let me introduce a little bit, Cher. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we are going on. And you see. Uh, we have to check the magnetic tracking, the magnetic field, whether uh, it, uh, it's tracking the probe uh, or not. Uh, as you see, uh, the probe color is green means, yes, everything is okay. The 
tracking is optimal. If it's red, that means something is uh, wrong and you should fix it. But now everything is okay. So I'm going on uh, with the next one. Uh, is this the 6 6? Uh, the depth, we, I have to fix the depth. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the ultrasound depth should be appropriate with the prostate volume. And I think for this patient, the depth for is appropriate and it should be same in fusion system also. And I'm going on the next step. Uh, the next step, in fact, I think the most important part of this procedure, uh, I mean, scanning the, ultras scanning the prostate on ultrasound images. Uh, for this purpose, I sweep the probe uh, based to apex, or we have another option, we can scan the patient apex to base. But I must prefer uh, scan the prostate based apex. But uh, in this movement, I mean, the probe movement should be slowly and steady. Okay. Now I will start from the base. First, I, I have to check. Uh, I'm trying to fix it with symmetrical, I mean, both lobes. And I think it's okay. I start to scan and now I am going on and this is not a so big prostate and now I finish it okay let's see uh, this is prostate on ultrasound images uh, uh, sagittal, sagittal image, axial image, and coronal image. But, in fact, it's, it's okay, but I want to do it uh, again uh, to reach a better contrast resolution. So I will do it again. Okay, now I will start. see the system shows the lesion and now I stop it yes I think it's a little bit better okay now there's another okay hold on that's wrong. okay and uh, now uh, as I told you this is the second step uh, we have to uh, segment the prostate on ultrasound images. In fact, this device has an automatic segmentation software. But if we uh, mark the borders of the prostate, it helps uh, the computer. And when I ask for the segmentation, you see it created the automatic segmentation. And now, uh, I'm doing the corrections for the contours, just for a fine tuning. Uh, I have to do it in three plane. I mean on. Axial, sagittal, and colon, coronal planes, you see. Okay, I'm going on. It will take time a little bit, but this is, as I told you, one of the most important parts of this procedure. Okay. Uh, I think it seems like we can do it. Maybe here I have to fix a little bit more. And for the cor coronal plane, I'm going to fix it. 
you see the borders. Okay, this is the apex. This is the prostate on sagittal image and the posterior border of the prostate. Maybe. Okay, you see on the in this uh, screen the 3D volume of the prostate. Okay. Now I'm going on. Okay, it seems like good. I mean, uh, the green one, uh, as you see, there we have a blend tool here, and we can change the contrast to the ultrasound and to the MRI. So we can see both data. And when I click or scroll on that tool on the right side, you see uh, the pink line is the prostate, and you see the posterior border of the prostate, and the angle of the posterior border of the prostate is uh, so similar uh, with the ultrasound. Ultrasound, and when I check the ultrasound, ultrasound, it, it seems okay. I mean, both volume, it seems okay. And if I go on like that, uh, that means uh, this is uh, a, a rigid uh, the registration. Uh, but first, I'm trying to line up those two data sets a little bit more appropriate in triplane, and I think, okay, now, at the moment, we have rigid registration. But this system has also elastic registration software. When we ask the computer to perform elastic registration, uh, the software combines two 3D volume data sets. And now we are going on. We ask to the computer to perform elastic registration, and you see uh, it did it. And now we completed the third step. And we are going to uh, the fourth step, the bias step. Due to this is an N5 probe, uh, there is another um, step, a technical step, we called uh, rotational adjustment. It's about uh, just for the N5 probes. Uh, we have to rotate the probe 180 degrees. One hundred and eighty degrees, and then freeze, and then we are trying to locate the prostate on appropriate location, and then we apply. And okay, we did our rotational adjustment. Now uh, we could go on uh, our lesion. Uh, I have to fix the rotation. And okay, this is our lesion. Now, okay, this is our lesion. Uh, first, I have to check that if the apex and the base uh, is uh, consistent with the pink line. You see, when I finish the apex, the pink uh, line finish, and pink volume finish, and when I go to the base, the pink volume finish. So that means we are okay. We are at the right position. So let's go on and perform our uh, biopsy. Yes. Now I need my biopsy needle. Okay, thank you. Okay. Everything seems like okay. The red dot represents the center of the lesion. Okay, I got it. First one. Okay, and I can mark 
the tip of the needle here and I add this information to the system and you see uh, the needle tip on 3D uh, volume data set. And I'm going on and I want to take one more. In fact, there isn't any consensus about how many cores uh, we should take from the, uh, each lesion. Uh, but I think uh, if uh, you are sure that uh, you can reach the center of the lesion twice, I think such a kind of lesion, I think is appropriate. And now this is the second one. Okay. Okay. And I mark the second one and I added uh, the data. So, okay, uh, we finished our uh, target biopsy uh, and we can go on our systematic biopsy. Due to this, pa this patient uh, hasn't any previous systematic biopsy, uh, as you know, we have to uh, take uh, also systematic biopsy. We will take uh, 12 core for this patient. And this device also has ability uh, for systematic lesions. I mean, when you open that systematic lesions button, you can see the right base, uh, lateral, medial. And when you activate that one, uh, you can see and that device can show you uh, the location, the exact location. So that's why you can uh, reach a, a homogeneous uh, systematic biopsy. Okay, so now I'm going on uh, the first one, the right base lateral. Uh, but I have to fix a little bit more here. I have to line up a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going on. And this is the first one. Okay. And I can mark that stomach region. And I can say uh, it should be a medial. Okay. Okay. It should be medial. Okay, I'm going on. In fact. to the time restriction, I'm going on uh, without uh, the uh, navigation of the uh, system. So uh, due to the general anesthesia, so I'm going on, uh, as I told you, uh, without system navigation. Now I'm, I'm taking right, mid, medial, okay, and then I will take here right mid lateral okay and okay do you have any questions by the way could I ask something 